Hello, my name's Corey Kamori, and welcome to Lyric Breakdowns here on the Breakdown Channel, hosted by yours truly. Let's get on with our discussion, our analysis of the hit song Chop Suey by System of a Down, released on their 2001 album Toxicity. System of a Down was one of the biggest bands to burst onto the new metal scene in the late 90s and early 2000s, and they were a band that were not afraid to inject their music with the influences of different genres. So at times they had that traditional metal sound, at other times they incorporated pop elements into their songs. They also at times incorporated traditional Armenian sounds uh, from their Armenian culture into their music, as well as some hints of polka here and there. So they were a band that were able to transcend genres and a band that was able to resonate with so many people from different walks of life. And when talking about toxicity, it is impossible to not mention Chop Suey. Still to this day, Chop Suey is easily one of System of a Down's biggest song that they've ever released. This song has so many movements in it, the verses are very fast and driving, they have this kinetic energy to them. And the choruses are quiet and somber and there's a lot of emotion that has been invested in those sections. And then the finale of this song opens the song up to this epic crescendo. So jumping straight into the song lyrically, we hear the words, Wake up, grab a brush and put on a little makeup. Hide the scars that fade away the shakeup. Why'd you leave the keys up on the table? Here you go, create another fable. You wanted to. So right out the gate, what this section of the song tells me about the story that is being told here is that this song is about an individual who puts on a mask, puts on a facade in order to go about their day-to-day -day life. And the way that these lyrics are delivered vocally gives you the kind of sensation that it's almost like they're a checklist of things that this person does to start off their day. You know, one, wake up. Two, grab a brush and put on a little bit of makeup. Three, you know, hide the scars that fade away the shakeup. You know, four, why'd you leave the keys up on the table? You know, and so on and so forth. So the vocals really drive home the idea that this is this person's everyday life. This is the monotony that they go through. These are the struggles that they go through. Moving on into the chorus of the song, we hear the lyrics. I don't think you trust in my self-righteous suicide. I cry when angels deserve to die. So in this section of the song, we kind of get more of a sense as to what this person not only is going through, but what is going through their head in order to remedy their scenario. This song, it seems to me, is about an individual who goes about their day-to-day -day life putting on a facade, putting on a mask in order to make it through their daily struggle, and then has these questions, these doubts, and wishes to end their struggle, and wishes to end their struggle in the form of suicide. The chorus itself seems to be switching positions, so the first half is uh, the person who wants to commit this act, and then the second half of this chorus seems to be from a party that is looking from the outside, you know, in. You know, and I cry when angels deserve to die almost reflects upon the views of some people in certain religious communities. Uh, you know, for example, in some Christian communities, if you commit suicide, it's seen as a sin, and you're someone who is not going to receive uh, the, the treatment that others would receive in the afterlife. You won't be going to that, that shiny place up in the sky, the pearly gates, if you will. The song, for the most part, is quite repetitive. It repeats a lot of these lines to reinforce the message. So the first verse is similar to the second verse. It's pretty much exactly the same. Uh, the same goes for the second chorus. However, as we move on throughout the rest of the song, we go to the section that kind of acts as the breakdown section of the song where the words... Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. Father, into your hands, why have you forsaken me? In your eyes, forsaken me. In your thoughts, forsaken me. In your heart, forsaken me. This section, I feel, reinforces my belief that this song is about suicide as a whole and about those who go through it and the different aspects and factors of suicide. In this particular line... 
we are again thrust into the perspective of the person contemplating suicide or the person committing suicide. A lot of people that contemplate suicide feel hopeless and they look up towards the sky and think that you know there's nothing up there, there's nothing that really wants to help guide me along in this world. And this idea is definitely reinforced in this section of the song. This section is literally a cry for help looking up and saying, you know, why have you forsaken me? Why have you left people in this world down here to rot and suffer in some scenarios? And in this case, it can be taken from that direction, but it can also be taken from the other direction of this person has already committed suicide and they're already in the afterlife and then they cannot be accepted into heaven due to what their religious beliefs were or what the religious beliefs of their family were. Now, I by no means am a religious person and I don't personally believe that whether you commit suicide or not has anything to do with where you go when you die. However, that's another discussion for another video. But for me, this song definitely seems like it is a song that tackles the issue of suicide and the issue of suicide from many different perspectives, from the perspective of those who are directly going through it, through the perspective of the people that are associated with that person and are, in essence, experiencing this thing with that person. And then it is also a song that tackles this subject from the perspective of you know, the omniscient, the religious, possibly the all-powerful. So you see suicide from all three of these different perspectives, and it gives you a three-dimensional look of this particular issue, of this particular act. But what do you guys think? Did I leave anything out? Is there anything that I should have added to this discussion? Do you guys have any other songs, System of a Down songs, any songs from other artists that you would like for me to discuss? Would you like to just have a continued discussion with me about this song? Let me know in the comments section below. And thank you again, as always. If you like what you've seen here, please hit subscribe, and I shall see you guys next time.